Okay, I think the time has come to have a serious conversation about the Bantamweight division. And sure, that's coming about primarily due to the reminder we received in the form of the incredible showcase turned in by TJ Dillashaw and Corey Sandhagen. Also the co-main event barn burner between Howland Paiva and Kyler Phillips, as well as the back and forth main card opener between Adrian Yanis and Randy Costa. But in reality, this is a conversation that has been brewing for some time. I do believe that the margins that exist between the Bantamweight, Featherweight and Lightweight divisions are quite narrow at this point in time. Each weight class has a wealth of top contenders, battle-hardened veterans, and compelling prospects, all boasting a wide range of styles. And while the usual response to the best division in the UFC question is to heap praise on the lightweights, I don't know, in recent times I'm not 100% sure anymore. And believe me, the differences between the three divisions are marginal, they truly are. But when I look at the entirety of the bantamweight roster right now, I do see such an enthralling mix of styles that yeah, I'm kind of ready to put my foot down on this one. So let's just start with the prospects, the guys who are either unranked or just on the edge of the top 15. We can talk about the likes of Adrian Yanez, a man who just proved his grit last weekend, beating another fighter in Randy Costa, who also has all of the tools needed to reach the top 15. Kyler Phillips, on the other hand, is a man who always brings the action, even when it's to his detriment, as it clearly was when his opponent Haolian Paiva weathered his early storm before stealing a somewhat divisive decision. All of a sudden though, just on the back of one event, We've got four fighters who I, along with a lot of you I'm sure, are already very excited to see return. What about Jack Shore? I've been watching this cage warrior stand out for years and already in his UFC career, his technical brilliance has been on display. His elite level jiu-jitsu and strong wrestling, making his candidacy for a top 15 test within his next few fights pretty clear. He's set to take on another interesting prospect in Saeed Nurmagomedov, who himself has amassed a 3-in-1 record within the UFC so far. Although the surname he shares with the former lightweight champion Khabib Nurmagomedov is merely a coincidence, not a direct family link. However, on the other hand, somebody who does count Khabib among his family is Umar Nurmagomedov, a highly touted Bantamweight prospect who stormed to a second round rear naked choke submission in his UFC debut. Obviously the bigger tests will come, but for now I'm definitely interested in Umar. Again, on the subject of the incoming Dagestani wave, the PFL and World Series of Fighting veteran Timur Valiev just took a decision over Hayoni Barcelos to break the Brazilian's 9 fight win streak bringing his own record to 18-2-1, establishing himself as another one to watch over the next year or two. Guys like Casey Kenny and Song Yadong may just have hit brick walls in the form of Dominic Cruz and Kyler Phillips respectively, but through those showings and in their back catalogue in general, I definitely wouldn't rule out seeing either man make good on their potential before too long. Kenny gave Cruz quite a few interesting looks in there, taking to that step up in competition with a degree of composure against one of the oddest stylistic matchups in the sport. And I've been a Song Yedong fan now for quite some time, and I really do see him breaking into the top 10 before too long. On a side note, if you're enjoying this content, be sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of our latest uploads, before leaving a comment to let YouTube's algorithms know that we are fast becoming one of the best MMA channels on the platform. And then we've got Ricky Simone, who after dropping a frankly shocking 40 second defeat to Uriah Faber before then losing out once again to Rob font, managed to turn his momentum back around, going 3-0 in the time since. And as far as the more established future contenders are concerned, love him or hate him, Sean O'Malley at this point in time is an unranked fighter, one who operates on an incredibly high level in the striking department. Sure, there are areas that he has yet to be tested in, but the man is clearly a highly creative and accurate striker. And even though his last opponent, Chris Moutinho, came away with the applause of the world, don't make the mistake of forgetting how good Sean O'Malley looked. And on the subject of the Sugar Show and its brief derailing, how about the man who did just that in Marlon Vera? He might have lost to Jose Aldo, but this guy has been angling towards the elite for what seems like years now. And finally, as far as rising talents are concerned, Marab de Villashvili is a real, real problem for these 135 pounders. And with his next outing set against the former title challenger Marlon Moraes, fans can expect to get a real sense of where his ceiling is at as far as his title aspirations are concerned. Though the prospects are where this division's strengths will lie in the years ahead, the veteran four-punch combo of Frankie Edgar, Uriah Faber, Dominic Cruz, and Jose Aldo together in the same division is a 2010 MMA fan's dream. And oddly enough, judging by their most recent form, these guys to varying degrees are still pretty damn competitive in this Bantamweight mix. Personally, I can see the likes of Aldo and Cruz still serving up some interesting problems for those within the top five, with Jose Aldo in particular really showing a freakish level of longevity to his career. Guys who were on the fringe like Cody Garbrandt, 
Pedro Munoz, Marlon Moraes, these are all legitimately compelling fighters. Guys who, though certainly flawed to at least some degree, are also more than capable of beating anybody on their day. There are no easy fights within this top 15, that much is clear. And when it comes to the beautiful mess that is the 135 pound title picture right now, those fighters who are immediate threats to the belt, Piotr Jan, TJ Dillashaw, Corey Sandhagen, Rob Font, you could match any of those guys up together or with the champion Aljamain Sterling and it would be guaranteed fireworks. And yes, I know the divisional title is in something of an odd spot, given the nature of Sterling's victory. But when the top five is looking this good, I can all but promise that order will be restored before too long. Sterling is a great fighter, don't get it mixed up. I do think that Jan is probably going to smoke him in the rematch. But I'm also a big fan of the Funkmaster, and in many ways, he was thrust into a very weird and awkward situation on that night, indeed in a fight that he was losing, and yeah, he made some odd decisions in the octagon and over the course of the night that followed, but all in all, come on, the guy's only human. Whether he can actually defeat Jan or not is hard to say. I personally don't believe that he's on Piotr's level, but either way, I'm just buzzing to see TJ Dillashaw take on the winner of that fight. This division is just awesome. It's packed from top to bottom with weird and wonderful fighters, guys who have managed to find legitimate tests of their skills before even reaching the top 15 leaving only the best of the best to progress. And I do think that over the course of the next year or two, the bantamweight division's merits as the best in the UFC will only be further proven to be true. But what do you think of this stacked weight class? And would you put it above the likes of the lightweight division or the featherweight division in your own top three? Do let us know your opinions in the comment section below. We always love to hear from you guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and a comment before subscribing to the channel so you can stay up to date with all of our latest uploads. Thank you for watching.